things I, I remember, you know, vividly from the Lakers championship a couple of years ago was the surprise many of us had that there was really no drama around that team at all. First year head coach and Frank Vogel, LeBron coming in off an injury, and they just played basketball. Granted, it was a weird year, obviously, Kobe passing and the pandemic and, and all of that, but there wasn't much strife inside. Now, within the last week, we've had a, a dust up on the sideline between Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard. And then Russ, after blowing the 26 point lead, is more upset, it seems, at Darius Baisley and the Thunder about adding a tack on buzz, uh, bucket late in the game <laughs> than he is about his own team losing that game. Yeah, and I think that was a way for him to channel the frustration uh, and maybe not have the, 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 the attention focused on him. But, you know, the, the reality is this. When you play the style of basketball he plays, you are going to be more prone to turn it over. Uh, but the, the issue is you're on a new team You've never played with these guys. You didn't play a lot in the in the regular se in a, a preseason, so you would think that the way he started, like let let's get a feel. Okay, this is where this guy likes to be when I attack here. Let let's get a sense of where guys are going to be on the floor and really focus on learning their games as opposed to trying to impose his will on the game. And and I think, listen, I don't think LeBron would have played tonight had they won that game. Right. I think it would have been a great opportunity for him to, to get a few days to make sure because you don't want to have a lingering injury. And he still may not, but I, I would suspect he's going to want to play because they do want to. They're not concerned, nor would I be if I were coaching them at this stage. It's five games in. Phoenix has one win. Like a lot of teams aren't really playing their best right now. Um, but because you have so much uncertainty, you do want to try to figure out an identity of who you're going to be and how you're going to play, and the best way to do that is to have those three guys out there. Coach, you made a point about, at this point in his career, the type of turnovers he makes. It's not the number, it's when they come. I, I go back to that in, in the conversation, which you touched on, about the mental aspect of it. Isn't that ha hasn't that been the downfall of Russell Westbrook for his 13-year NBA career, is that he lets the opponent get the best of him. He lets the opponent dictate his emotions. And and at this point, 14 years in, the Lakers knew what they were getting. Does he need to change a little bit? Yeah, and, and look, Flip Saunders had a favorite saying all the time, your biggest strength can be your biggest weakness. And Russ' biggest strength is his emotion. He plays with a lot of emotions. He plays with that fire, that toughness. But also, that emotion gets the best of him. And sometimes when he feels like he's been wrong or his team's been wrong, he get caught up into these personal battles all the time. And those are the opportunities where he's just got to stop and understand that he's playing for a big something bigger. You know, you're playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. You're a starting point guard for the Lakers. So you have to understand at all times, you're going to get the other team's best. It's a lot of pressure on the Lakers. Think about this. From the time this team was put together, it's been championship or bust. And now we've been seeing all these little dust-ups and flare-ups, and now you're having a controversy with the turnovers and Russell and Dwight and all the, the things that are going on. Maybe the pressure, and then the team is just not playing well. Because, Jerry, looking at this stretch, Greg, we thought the Lakers would come through this on the other end, 7-2. Mm -hmm. They won't beat San Antonio, but that was an overtime win without LeBron. We saw what happened to OKC, that debacle. And now, all of a sudden, you're looking at being 7-2 after this stretch, and you're saying, look, we got to start playing some basketball. Listen, they, they almost lost the, the, game, the other game they yeah. won to Memphis. <laughs> so they, they, they have issues uh, that have to be ironed out. And the reality is, listen, I don't know how it was going to transpire, but you had to assume they were going to get off to a slow start. Historically, when you put a team together like this, you go back to LeBron when he went to, to Miami. They were, I think, 9-8. and eight. Yeah to start the season. Right. They had their struggles. It, it's, it takes time to figure out the balance between those three guys. And it's really the balance between LeBron and, and Russell. And then you got to factor in with Russell, you know, they got to learn to trust him, but he's got to learn to trust his teammates. Like, Russ is one of those guys that he is a home run hitter. And what do home run hitters typically do? They strike out a lot, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so he's got to he's got to be a guy that's going to hit some singles, hit some doubles, take some walks like and that's a really hard thing to do for an uh, over aggressive player. But he's going to have to find that balance in order for this team to have a chance to get.